Welcome. Welcome to the Last D experience. First of all, I sound like Froggy fighting a cold. It's all good. Hopefully my voice will be able to hold on <clears throat> through the talk show. So I'll be going in and out <laughs> like a reach in puberty. <laughs> you know, but um, I came on here. I'm all about consistency. And if I can get on here and do what I have to do, I will do what I have to do. Um, it's an interesting topic. And I know I always say I come on here just a tad bit early to give people enough time to get the children out the room. Yeah, is that kind of topic on today. And again, the house rules are for the less the experience is foremost respect. Okay. We come from different backgrounds. We come from different experiences and everything. So I want people to be able to convey their experiences without any fear of being judged. And we're just sharing experiences and opinions. Yes. You know, on a platform where everybody's just talking about grown folk stuff. Child, like I always say, we all need therapy. Let's get it together for free. <laughs> so um, I'm going to try to tackle this with tact. Because um, a lot of us have gone through it, got the t-shirt and the underwear, chow, you know, and you don't have to, you know, tell your story if you don't want to tell your story publicly. I appreciate all the topics and all the stuff that keeps coming in, flooding my messages and my direct messages. And I just thank you guys <clears throat> for all of your support, you know. I'm just, oh, it's, it's cathartic for me to be doing this. Don't nobody get paid for that on Facebook. This ain't YouTube, you know. But I just thought it would be nice for a lot of people, hey, how you doing? Um, a lot of people to get on it and just share. You know, just like you're sitting in somebody's living room chewing the fat, you know, talking about this and he hawing and he con. You know what I'm saying? So that's all it is. And, you know, and it's called the Let's D experiences because, you know, I be transparent as well. And I tell you guys some of my tomfoolery that's going on as well and i know i tagged you guys really really later than i usually do but i'm going to go ahead and go forward with this and um like i say welcome hey paris how you doing um don't be afraid to give your opinion even if it's not the norm even if it's not what everybody else is saying still give your opinion you know i'm going to respect what you say <clears throat> And everyone else is too. I got good people that come on here. Yes. Um, so the question is, and it's a loaded question. I know this. Hopefully we want to split up in part one and part two and part three and all that, you know, but it's a loaded question. I get that. Should a side chick, hey, Suze, <laughs> should a side chick and a wife sit and have a mature dialogue? Is there any reason at any point of the situation that calls for a side chick or mistress or whatever we want to call them these days and a wife to come together and have a conversation about the situation? Yes. Now, if you notice, I didn't say the side chick, the wife, and the husband. You know, I got some stories about that. <laughs> but I'm talking about the two females. And I found it interesting. Like I say, you know, I get a lot of stuff. I get a lot of stuff and a lot of requests and things like that. And I know I'm not a professional anything. We're just all, like I said, <laughs> really, Susie? Susie's saying H no. I beg to differ in some cases. Tell me why you're saying that. You know, just, you know, because we want to understand everything that you guys say. Try to explain it and, and give a brief explanation of why you feel that way. You know, there could be a lot of circumstances. Hey, Jack, <clears throat> a lot of circumstances that will call for the side chick to come together and have a dialogue with the wife. I'm going to shoot some out there. We all just going to keep it real. We can be raw today. We might as well, because it's happening all the time. 
I know a lot of us wear masks and, and pretend everything is all good and blah, 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 but it ain't. I said, ain't on purpose for you, you know, grammar and dialogue, you know, dogs, you know, but it's not, it's not. So we're going to pull the cover off a lot of things. Okay. Um, Susie is saying, why would I sit? Oh, hi, Mr. Barge. How you doing? Mm -hmm. Hope you are well. This is going to, I lost my mouse guys. So I'm doing this the old fashioned way. Susie is saying, why would I sit down with her if I'm the other woman? I'm going to answer that in a minute, Suze. Paris is saying, heck no. I say no because any qualms I have with the situation will all be directed towards the husband. That's another thing I was going to get to later on, um, Paris, because a lot of things, hey, Dale, how you doing? Um, hope all is well, sweetheart. Um, a lot of times you find, especially on these reality shows and all this other tomfoolery that's going on, um, in the media and social media and on TV, you always see <clears throat> the women attacking the other woman, cussing her out, busting her tires, fighting her and whatever else. And what I'm about to say might rub you guys the wrong way, but that other woman did not make that vow to you. She didn't make any promises to you, you know? Um, not, I'm not excusing her, I'm just making a valid point. I always would wonder, why do the wife or the girlfriend or whomever always jump on the girl and beat her? Most of the time, the girl don't even know you exist because they've been told that, you know, <clears throat> y'all legally separated. They've been told by the man that you're divorced. So they've been told by the man, you're just the children's mother, your whole ex-wife. And, and sometimes they say nothing. So therefore, not all the time. We're going to cover everything. Therefore, some of these women don't know you exist. So I've always wondered, like you said, Paris, why they always jump on the woman. Hey, Linda, how you doing? Okay, I'm just, hi, Matt, how you doing? Okay, Linda is saying Linda love. The other woman should always respect the wife because what she gives will come back to you. That's what Linda said. I'm trying to get everybody's comments before I go in and bump in my gums. Um, Susie is saying, true less, you should be confronting the man. And that's how I always felt. But let me, let me, let me, let me say something though. I've, I, I, I've, I've been on this planet quite a while. <laughs> and there can be a situation where, okay, you've confronted your man, be it husband, fiance, boyfriend. Okay, you've confronted him. I don't know what y'all, whatever y'all choose to do with the situation, your relationship, blah, blah, blah. But when you, when the woman comes to your yard or your door or calls your house phone, when we all had house phones, if y'all can remember those days, um, when you ask her, Shaquiqua, <laughs> whatever her name is, would you please stop calling my phone or don't come to my house anymore, honey, or do not come to my neighborhood, do not come to my driveway, don't come in my yard, okay? You've asked her woman to woman, you already know she exists, everything that went down, so you're asking her, hey, don't, don't, don't come over here. And when she decides to call again or anyway, or come to your yard anyway, or come in your driveway, everything you've asked her not to do, she do anyway, then it becomes a you and her problem. That's just how I feel. I don't know how you guys feel about that, but that's how I feel. You deal with the man. And when you ask this woman, hey, don't come around here no more. Just look, you, you, you being disrespectful. You blatantly being disrespectful. And she want to throw her happy hips over there again. That's when it becomes a you and her, I mean, a you and her. <laughs> Are you and her situation. But other than that, you need to be dealing with the man. And you need to find out what is she giving that I'm not giving? What is she providing that I'm not providing? You know, what void is she filling that I'm not filling? You're going to have to tell me something because if I don't know the why you're stepping out or the why you have a Roman eye or whatever else, I can't fix it. 
I, I can't fix it. If I ask you, what's up? What's wrong? I mean, what brought this on? You know what I'm saying? And it takes a lot of self-control and restraint to sit calmly down and have a conversation with your man without hollering, going up, acting crazy, whatever else to do. And for you to sit there and ask him, he don't need to be going, oh, no. No, that ain't going to fly, okay? Because I feel like this, you know, if you want somebody else, let me go. You, you know, let me go. So let me hear what you guys are saying. I don't want to keep bumping my gums because, like I said, y'all can disagree with me. I ain't Dr. Spock. You know, everybody have different experiences. But we're just trying to cover it because a lot of this stuff, this, time, this, this stuff is happening and people dying and getting cut up and going to jail for no reason. Why well, am I going to be out here fighting your mistress or your side chick, you know, get, catching a charge? I'm in jail. I'm away from my kids. Or get the fighting and the shooting. I'm dead. Away from my kids. And the man is going on doing it again. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, I know before the men get to hollering, I know this can go both ways. I know women can cheat and you can be dealing with men. I mean, that's a given. I'm not biased on this show at all. I'm usually like do things as men oriented anyway, but it seems to be this thing on these TV shows, in the streets, everywhere you go, world star and all this other stuff where women are fighting naked. There's somebody that snatched the shirt off. They somebody that snatched their like their sundress off. They in the street fighting like animals, titties swinging and everything else. And that man is sitting back on the car laughing with his friends. I've seen this. You guys have seen that. No one, no, it's too many eligible men out here. I mean, no, nah, no. Okay, Paris is saying that's still on him because no woman should put herself out there unless she feels she is welcomed by her prey. And that's true. In the olden days, and I don't know how old, I know Paris is young, but in the olden days, men had mistresses on one side of the town and their wife was on the other side of town. And it was a rule. You don't say nothing to my wife. If the wife found out he was cheating, he told her or somebody else told her whatever. But it wasn't because a mistress showed up on her doorstep or called her phone or came up to her job or whatever else. That stuff, that stuff just wasn't heard of. People is wilding. Like the, the, the disrespect is just surreal. And nobody's talking about it. You know, it's none of my business who you choose to be, you know, out here when it comes to you in your relationships and things like that. But we need to bring some respect back in the picture. That's why a lot of people getting cut, shot, killed unnecessarily. I mean, no penis is that good. I mean, can I say penis on here? Anyway, you know what I mean. It ain't dripping in gold. And I'm sure you can find something better somewhere. You know, but I mean, I just think it's a conversation that really, really needs to be had. I'm trying to get all your comments on here it's going so fast so, Susie what I'm saying be raw that's why I try to get your kids out the kitchen or the room or wherever you are but, you know yes this is for grown folks if your comment is raw say it I don't care let you know, say what you need to say because we all need therapy up here we all need to talk and vent about one thing or another or learn from one another you know or support one another who may be going through this who maybe just i've been told which is tripping me out i can safely say about over 100 or 200 some people watch this but they never comment they never like they never share or anything like that they just secretly watch the show and you'll be surprised how your comment may help somebody you understand so susan say what you got to say hey nadine and andre say what you got to say you know and while susie is typing <clears throat> just to say her raw comment that she's scared to say. Susan ain't never been scared to say nothing, so I'm kind of scared now. You know? <laughs> but, um, I, you know, see, I got a stupid gene. I just, you know, you get to a point where you're too old for the shenanigans. I ain't busting nobody's tires. I'm not keying your car. I'm not busting the windows out your car. I'm not <laughs> sleuthing like Sherlock Holmes and jumping from behind bushes on your lunch break. No. I'm not doing that. No. And I'll say straight up, hey, when you get sick of me, say, yo, Les, 
I'm sick of your fat A, or I'm feeling somebody else. Let a sister know, I'll keep it moving. I'll keep it moving, you know. So Susie is saying, this woman called my house. I said, he is cutting the grass. I said, I said, be at your house later. I said, happy birthday. Make sure you suck the, the bleep out of his D where he effed. But in, <laughs> and she started crying. Oh, you know, I bleeped out a lot. But y'all look over there to see what Susie said. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've had some experiences that I don't know if I should share or not, because I don't want to offend, offend anybody's cousin or relative or things like that. Or somebody might know somebody. Hold on. I'm trying to scroll up to Paris. Oh, we're running out of time. Okay, Paris is saying, on top of that, I never understood why a side chick would want that man in the first place. Sex is one thing. But to actively try to pursue a relationship with a man that will break his covenant with God and his wife is beyond me. Girl! <laughs> Girl! I, I just, I just... That's why I'm so glad we're having this dialogue. You know, because I, I never understood that. You know, it, it, I never understood it. Why are you trying to have a straight-up relationship? You know, and... Back to the initial question, should there have any reason at all a side chick, side chick and a wife sit and have a mature dialogue? Sometimes the side chick then got pregnant. <laughs> and, um, <clears throat> she, you know, that needs to be discussed, you know, because the children that's brought into these situations are innocent. I, I, I'm not one that <clears throat> after the baby's here, the baby at your house, if you decide, because I feel like if you decided to stay with the man after that, you shouldn't have a problem with that child coming up in your house and treating it wrong. That's on you. That's, that's a no. If you're going to keep this man around, you can't be treating an innocent baby. They don't. They can't help who their mama is, who who their daddy is, and how they got there. That that's 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 just wrong, you know. And if you have strong feelings like that, and you can't deal with he went out and got a baby on you and this and that, divorce him, leave him. You know, I'm not telling about Leo. Anybody getting beat up and shot up on the news? But I'm just saying. <laughs> Parents, <laughs> her pregnancy ain't got it to do with me. I agree with that to a certain extent, but if she's requesting money out of your house in your pocket and want to be active in his life and want the baby or the pregnant, whatever, there's some sister wife stuff going on, whatever, we need to have a discussion. And we need to sit down without any hollering and screaming and fighting, whatever, and whatever, go look. And you need to tell her how you feel. Look, th that ain't happening. No, this is not, you know, the Brady Bunch, one big happy family. That ain't happening, you know? So many reasons, so many things that need to happen, you know, with sitting down with a side chick and discussing after you discussed it with your man or whatever. In some scenarios, it may be the three of y'all sitting there. Um, and Paris, I'm gonna tell you where I'm coming from. Oh, this is interesting. Um, I wanna say, God, I dare to say maybe, geez, I don't know, like 25 years ago, 26 years ago, I'm not sure. But I was married to someone and they just left, you know, and had another house, you know, with a roommate, a man roommate or whatever in another city. Well, I had the children, they were teeny. And I was like, you know, well, I needed the insurance card because I had to take the kids to the doctor. Well, he gave me the address where he was living then because at first i didn't know where he went or where he was living you know i just had a number and that i could call and i needed the cards so when i get there beloved um he didn't know that he thought his mistress would be gone for the day but for some reason she came back when i was there and i did I, and i and <laughs> i recognized her you know, uh, child, childhood friend. Wow. So 
that means you knew who I was and you knew who you were dealing with because you know me and you knew who I was married to. So you knew I existed in every way, shape, form, or fashion. And I was just like, wow, my, you know, so I walked in there and I was like, hey, so-and-so. And she got all scared and I said, wait, 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 it ain't, he got the tripping, don't start nothing less, don't you start nothing. I'm like, you're not that even important, nah. You know, and he's like, you know, started yanking on my arm, like, get up and get out of my house. I'm like, yo, dude. Get your hands off me. What? You yanking on you? I'm the wife. <laughs> You're yanking on me. You know, I was like, yo, I sat in a chair, made myself comfortable, put my purse down, you know, and she's sitting on the couch, look less. Look, I ain't trying to be in nothing. I said, how you not trying to be nothing? You're screwing my husband. Like, yo, wow. How you people doing? Where's so and so? Y'all all right? Because I'm, I, oh my gosh. And so, <laughs> Um, he's like, get up out of here and this and that. I said, yo, don't, don't touch me anymore. I would hate to call the cops. I would hate to do so, you know, and I'm gonna call somebody on you because you be acting stupid. I'm like, I did not do a thing. I was actually, I was talking just like this, y'all. Kid you not. God is my witness. You know, I was like, so, so-and-so, how long y'all been messing around? Look, let's, I just, you know, I just, I said, well, wait, let's stop the theatrics, girl. Just how long y'all been messing around? Don't tell her nothing, so-and-so. Don't tell her nothing. Ain't none of her bleeping business. Ain't no effing business. I was like, so-and-so, how long y'all been messing around? And she gave me, hey, Gil and Eric, how y'all doing? And she gave me the time, which was before he moved out of my house abruptly, you know. And so he moved there so they could be together. I knew none of this. And I, okay, um, I said, okay, so is it serious? Are y'all like in love or something. I mean, like, what's up? And I, I couldn't stop laughing. When I'm, when I'm uncomfortable or, I just got a stupid gene, you know? And I was just sitting there like befuddled, like, is this really happening? And she said, I mean, I don't know. Don't answer her. You ain't gotta answer her questions. I was like, so-and-so, look, I'm just trying to have a mature conversation with you. I was in the dark. Now I'm in the light. I want some questions answered because I'm confused, you know? And I was like, um, you pregnant? <laughs> Cause I looked down and she was a skinny girl, like a naturally skinny framed girl, but she just looked fat in the middle. <laughs> she was like, no, I'm not pregnant anymore. Anymore. So I look at homie and I look at her I'm like, whoa, anymore, anymore. I said, what happened to the baby? <laughs> She said I had a miscarriage and she started crying and this and that and this and that. I handed her some tissue I saw at the table, girl, you know. What was I supposed to do? You know? And he started calling people that knew me. Somebody need to come get less. Less in here acting crazy, just lying on me. And I so and so on the phone want to speak to you. So I went up to the phone in the kitchen. I was like, hello. She said, What is going on with you? I was like, nothing. I'm just having a conversation. She said, you just having a conversation? I said, yes, ma'am. I'm just having a conversation. I'm just trying to get some things straight. I, I said, she said, well, what's going on? I said, so-and-so, I came in to get the, uh, the insurance card to take the kids to the doctor. And I met so-and-so's mistress. She says, oh, wow, well, he didn't say nothing about a mistress. I said, well, yeah. She said, well, you go do what you do, darling. I'll talk to you later. I said, thank you. <laughs> so when I went in there, he is sitting beside her. Rubbing her back, it's gonna be all right, baby. Just calm down. I'm gonna get her out of here and this and this and this and that and blah blah blah. I'm like, I said, okay, well, you know, I have some more questions. You gonna do what you're gonna do is you gonna get out of here. So she got up, and so I went to go sit beside her. I I guess she thought I was gonna hit her, but I wasn't. I wasn't that invested. You know, she ran out the house, running down the road. He took off running down the road after her and I'm standing on the porch with my purse like so and so come back baby come back baby blah 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 I'm sitting there going and I'm looking at the the wedding ring on my finger of course I took it off and tossed it but I'm just like oh my gosh so that was just one scenario I had to go through you know when people call the house I would give you know the mistress call the house I would give them the phone you know in other situations but those are the certain situations where I said, should there ever be a time where a wife sit down and talk with a side chick? Yeah, for information. 
you know, and, and if there's a baby involved and, and if she's trying to get child support out of my household, you know, I have told mistresses like, look, okay, you want them? Cool. But all of his money is coming here like it's supposed to be. My household would not be disrupted at all. If you want him, you're going to have to take care of him because he's working to maintain the household that he's supposed to be head of. So I've had those conversations. And Leslie ain't paying child support out of nothing of her check. <laughs> no. So these are like weird situations where a side chick and a wife would have to have some dialogue. But I just, I, I don't even know what to say. It's a lot of stuff going on. But I am not a fan of two women scrapping like two water buffaloes, you know, over a man. I mean, where's our dignity and self-respect? Let me tell you something. You can't make nobody love you. You can't. You may be skilled in all, all of that. <laughs> you may be turning cockwheels, hanging from chandeliers. But a man cheating is not about you. And men, a woman cheating is sometimes not about her. <laughs> You know, you know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to be fair across the board. But I was talking to the ladies today, and you men can feel free to um, jump in at any time. But it, it, it's like an epidemic. It's like the, the era for the side chick era. There's no respect. There's no honor. You know what I'm saying? Okay, Jack is saying guilt is a mother. Make you imagine stuff that doesn't exist. What do you mean by that, Jack? I don't understand. You need to explain what you mean by that, my brethren, because I'm confused on what you mean about that. I, I, don't, I, I don't know. Hey, Tamika, how you doing? But, you know, and don't get me wrong, relationships are just what they are. You fall in love. Some people, stuff happens. Sometimes people grow apart, blah, blah, blah. I just think communication and honesty is the key. There's a reason you fell infatuation or in love with that individual enough to marry them or engage them or be a long time girlfriend or boyfriend. There was a reason initially why you fell for them enough that you thought at that time you wanted to be with them the rest of your lives. So what needs to be discussed is what changed? What happened? Did you get used to me? in that way, if you know what I mean, you know, is it, you want something different? Um, did we grow apart emotionally, mentally, intellectually? I mean, sit down and have that dialogue. People think I'm crazy. When I be saying like, yo, like, just tell me like, yo, you, what, what's wrong with you? Nothing. Oh, okay. Something's wrong because, you know, every time the phone rings, you're walking out the room, you're going outside, and like all my conversations are had right in front of you, you know. So, those type of things, there are warning signs and flags. Hey, Monica, and you know, they're like signs all over the place. So, we choose to ignore them a lot of times, you know what I'm saying? But I, I, I just think that, that there's a way to do things with people not getting shot and cut and cussed out and turn off people's lights and <laughs> messing up people's cars. I mean, you know, I, I just, this is just my opinion. You guys have stopped talking. Why? Why have you stopped talking? <laughs> you know, it, a lot of people are embarrassed by it, you know, and I understand that sometimes um, when you're cheated on or whatever else, you feel ashamed or you feel embarrassed because you know, your spouse or your, I don't know, fiance is out on the town and people are seeing them and it ain't you on their arm. I can see how that would be embarrassing or you would be ashamed about that. But I'm like this, hey, it is what it is. It do what it do. You can't make nobody love you. You can't make nobody respect you. You can't teach people how to treat you, but you can't make them respect you, love you, or honor you. You just cannot. You know, and I just don't understand the era of um, the side chick just coming up to a wife and cussing and acting a fool and this and that. Oh my gosh. Oh, did you all right? <laughs> 
He says relationships suck sometimes, I tell you. Wow. Yeah, that's a big red flag, Monica. When they walking outside, they get a, even if they get a text, they walking outside. You get a phone call, they walking upstairs. You know what I'm saying? Like, what's, what's so private? What, what, what can I not see? Huh? It's, it's all good. But, you know, I love me too much to be out here scrapping and fighting and <laughs> boobs hanging out because somebody snatched it off you. People be throwing wigs all in the street. Get out of here, man. It's just, it's too many fine gentlemen out there for me to be fighting over one coon. <laughs> Oh, Paris, you can't see a lot of the comments? Mm, I wonder why. She says she can't see a lot of the comments. They're trying to see what's going on, the production team. Um, is, is, are the rest of you guys having the same problems? You guys can't see the comments? Um, I don't want to start pushing buttons. Because I might just cut y'all completely off. Well, I only got one minute anyway. <laughs> but um, really quick, I just want you guys to continue the conversation over there. Um, and yeah, Paris is saying, um, she's asking you guys, is anyone else having the problem she's having where they can't see the comments? Can you see them? What about you? They're, 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 they're checking it out now, guys. Jack is saying, it, it's, Jack is having the same problem. He's saying same here. Okay, maybe once I log off, guys, you'll be able to see um, the comments and things like that. And if so, well, Monica sees, sees them. So some of you are seeing them and some of you aren't. And I'm so, so I don't think it's on our end. Hey, hello, Lucido, how you doing? But I just wanted to just to, to share, especially with, um, I gotta say this. If any of you guys are familiar with the, the play I did, produced and directed and starred in, um, Hips, um, one of the storylines in that was the main character, which was the wife, because of an illness and giving him two children that he wanted, that she didn't feel comfortable having, but he pressured her because the doctor said, you know, if you carry a child and start having children, you know, this will happen to your body and that will happen to your body because she was dealing with sarcoidosis and she had fibroid tumors and things like that. And the, the, the basic premise of the whole story was she got fat. She wasn't the college buck 25 athlete, blah, 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 he met. But her body changed because she made that sacrifice for him. And a lot of times, life happens. You get older, you spread. Some of us like me deal with illnesses and side effects of medications and surgical things and blah, blah, blah. You can, hey, you can be in a car accident or, or get disabled or, or anything. I just feel that it's a travesty if someone says they love you and what they're supposed to be loving is your soul, your character, who you are in the inside. And if someone, be, I'm telling you, I'm not making this up. I've been told by several different people, you know, and if also was on something on some kind of show on the internet or whatever, um, some guy wrote into some, some man named Jackson Jacks, and he was saying that he no longer desires his wife sexually. She don't turn him on. She disgusts him because she got fat. They both was two uh, school teachers. He was embarrassed to walk around with her when they were at work at the school. And he was like, he'd be throwing hints to her, exercise, won't you do this, won't you do that, and whatever else. And he just said, he just, hey, Rodney, he just don't want her. He has no sexual urges for her. He care about her well-being, but he doesn't love her, don't want her. And so my question would have been to that young man, why did her character change? Did the way she talked to you change? Do the way she treats you and, and, and 
hold you at night, nurse you when you're sick, keep your household going, all of that. Did any of those things change? Because the answer would have been no. So you are ready to leave her, won't touch her, won't kiss her, won't hold her hand, won't go to bed with her, won't lay with her just because she got fat? That's a shallow mess right there. That is just wrong. That, you know, and I don't understand the double standard. I'm going to get off here because I got to go. But men are allowed to be bald, fat, missing teeth, half a teeth, whatever. Men are allowed to be just anything they want to be. And we're supposed to accept it and love them for who they are and all, all of that stuff. But when nature, life, and gravity and circumstances, circumstances attack the females, a lot of people won't get rid of us or they want something younger, something with a flat stomach or something where you can see the sky through their thighs. <laughs> they don't want no chase slapping, you know, and things like that. But yet you sacrifice and give them, them everything. I just think that is a horrible, horrible, horrible double standard. And you men can attack me over here in the comments. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, Monica says she saw that somewhere. You know, I'm not going crazy. I do remember seeing that somewhere. Hi, Mike Miller. How you doing? So, you know, I just think, guys, we need to, to the men on here, if you have a woman, you know, just love her. You know, talk to her. Communicate with her. Discuss what's wrong. Maybe you can make it right. Maybe she's not aware of this or that. And, and same with you ladies. You know, just everybody just needs to talk. And then you find out that it ain't no salvaging this, this, and that. Don't be dragging out people's um, divorce papers and legal separations. Let them people go, man. Y you know, because I'm the type of person, I don't like to start one chapter without closing another. That's just who I am. And sometimes people can take your moral compass and use it against you, you know, to keep you anyway. I digress. <laughs> but um, you guys keep the talk going over there in the comments. I have to go hit the road, hit the streets and things like that. And I thank um, you guys for supporting me. A lot of things are going on. Oh, again, um, go to Amazon.com and um Otis Lipscomb, his um, pseudonym is Sammy J. He wrote uh, a book, uh, uh, Introspections of Life and Love. It's a book of intimate poetry from a man's point of view. And I was honored enough that he allowed me to illustrate the book for him. So he's a published author already, but now I'm a published illustrator and the book is doing phenomenal. So um, um, Otis slash Sammy J, um, put where they can buy the book and where you're having the online book party, watch party. I don't know. I'm, I'm messing it up. Oh, just put the information down in the thing so the guys can get it. I mean, oh, he is from Las Vegas, so I'm trying to get him over here so we can do a book signing slash concert for you guys. But um, yes, go support him. And when I get, um, when they start taping this uh oh shout out to russ fulmore and jose manguel yes um they're going to professionally produce the less the experience and i don't know if they're going to do a, a live audience i don't know if they're going to do it on the tv or whatever else but i don't know what they're going to do but when i get all that information i will let you guys know and also when they start casting for the movie pips the movie i will let you guys know as well because we'll be needing extras you know for all kinds of scene the club scene and and the dance studio scene and all the scenes so even if you're not an actor we'll find room for you we we will you know it'd be unpaid roles you know like you know like guy number one waiter number two things like that you know but if you want to experience what it's like to uh, make a movie and be on a movie set you know just shout it out and so i will let you guys um know what sunday at what of december 2nd oh this can you put the entire information i don't know what they don't know what sunday december 2nd is put what it is what time it's happening what's going on where they can buy the book online until we get the book signing here in Virginia, you know? So, cause you're in Vegas, so they need to know what's going on and what's popping in Virginia. Okay guys, so again, I will let you guys know 
when it's time to cast an audition for uh, audience members, I'm sorry, for the movie hits and for the less D experience audience members and things like that. And so I'm super, super excited. A lot of things going on. Oh, shout out to Brandon, Chaotic Beats. Yes, he is killing it in the studio. I was in the studio with him uh, about a week and a half ago, a, a couple of Saturdays ago, and we created something very interesting and i'm so excited to be a part of chaotic beats and all his stuff and things like that and the rhythm shack up there in richmond you know it was phenomenal the boys are based he's not a boy he's a man the dude is a beast oh my gosh and i'm trying brandy you see i sound like a man you know yes sir producers you know but um i'm gonna make sure i, I get my throat together brandon so i can come back and finish what we're doing trying if I can stay out the cold in the rain. But anyway, you guys stay sweet. Thank you so much for joining me on the Less D experience. And remember, you know, keep the conversation over there in the comments and let's talk about this. All right. Love you, beloved. Hey, because we all need therapy. <laughs> <laughs>